Hello, so I'm going to show you and explain to you how to work with movements in the vector devices. So if you don't know, the vector devices use a particle system. And here are some particles. And they use the movements of those particles to affect different audio parameters. Uh, I have a few different vector devices. This one's vector FM, so it uses the particle movements to affect the parameters of an FM oscillator or uh, multiple FM oscillators. So um, I'm not going to get into all the details on how to use the vector device, but just focusing on the movements in this video. And to do that, we'll focus on these bottom two menus. By the way, in all of the vector devices, uh, these menus are identical. So once you know how they work with this device, you can use them with the others. Great. So what are these two menus? Well, this first menu here works with the forces applied to the particles. So as you can see, they're moving. And maybe you'll notice there's, let me turn this down. And maybe you'll notice there's a, uh, a little square in the middle holding them all towards it. And um, that's what's called an attractor. And we can see here um, in the menu, attractor. And it's activated, um, if I turn it off, they stop going towards that square. And if I turn it back on, they're gonna be pulled toward it. So what's happening here is we have an attractor force and it's attracting the particles towards it. <clears throat> now you can place this attractor anywhere in this 2D space here, here. It just depends where you want the particles kind of rotating around. Before I get into the other forces, um, I just want to make aware of the menu below this and this is the menu for the particle settings, sorry. And we'll just be going back and forth between these menus and I'll just be dealing with this top half of the menu here mostly. And these deal with the settings of the particle system. And these will be crucial in um, affecting how the forces work. But um, before I get into this too much, let's go back to the forces and continue on uh, learning what the other two forces are. So you already know the attractor force now. Before I get into the details, let's look at the other two available. We also have a flow field force. And this force um, allows you to draw specific movements for the particles on this 2D board. Um, so you can see there's a bunch of cells here, or kind of like a grid of these little circle and line things. And each one of these circle line things is a direction for the particle to move when it's on top of it. So if I just drag my mouse, I can create different directions or pathways for the particles to move. And this could be useful for you if you want the particles to move some specific direction or, or movement, unlike the attractor where it's a bit less predictable. However, you can lower the strength of the flow field as seen here, and it will make it a bit harder for the particles to follow the directions exactly. And that could also be a desired effect. And the final um, force you can apply to the particles to move them is this one here called magnetism. And let me just create a new set of voices so we can see. And as you can see, the movement is a bit less, um, it's a bit more ambiguous. And this is because they're now being attracted to each other just like a magnet would, so opposites attract and uh, similar colors um, push, push the other away. 
just like you'd expect from magnets. And if you reverse the magnetism to the left side, the opposite happens. Now, uh, similar colored particles attract and opposite um, colors repel. Okay, so those are the three forces. Now I'll go into a bit more detail on them and how you can go about getting different dynamics from them. So let me go to one voice. Let's go back to the attractor. So under the attractor we also have a strength parameter. If I turn it up, the particle won't move very far from the attraction point. And if I turn it down, it will be a bit more loosely attracted, maybe taking longer for it to be pulled back to that point. <clears throat> if I turn the strength to the other side, it will repel from that point. Right now it's a bit boring, it just sends it off to the side, but depending on how you have the rest of the forces set up, this could be a desirable effect to repel from wherever you have the attractor. Now, you'll notice that this strength alone doesn't add too much variety to the types of dynamics you can get from the attractor. And that's because you have to use it in combination with this velocity. This velocity parameter isn't exactly the speed, um, but it can affect the speed. The what the velocity does is it limits how much the particle can move every step or every frame, because this is a simulation run at a certain frame rate. So every second there's a certain amount of frames that happens that makes this particle move. And the velocity just limits how much the particle can move every frame. <clears throat> so if the velocity is high, the particle can move a lot. And if the velocity is low, it can't move very much. And it, it appears like I affected the speed at first, but then you'll notice... Let's speed up. This is the actual speed. Then you'll notice when I speed it up, once it gets towards the square, it's not moving much again, even though the strength is not very high. And that is because, because we lowered the amount that the particle can move each frame, it's not moving very far before it gets attracted back to the square. Even if it had a very low strength, it still can't move far enough to get away from it. <clears throat> so by... So by combining this velocity parameter and this strength parameter together and uh, working with them a bit, we can get the different dynamics from the attraction. And let's say we had a movement that we really liked going on. We liked how the particles are moving, how they were positioned, and whatnot. Then we can go to this bottom menu and click the Save button here. This will save exactly where the particles are at at that moment with the velocity they had, meaning the direction they were moving and really everything about them so that you can recall that state and that same movement again in a preset or in a live set. <clears throat> Let's continue on with what's below uh, the other settings in Attractor. So now we have this little uh, tab called Attracts. Right now it's attracting all of the colors of the particle, but if we go to negative, the yellowish orange colored ones, now you can see it keeps attracting them, but the blue particle stops being attracted. So this says what color or what charge of the particles this attractor is working on. Now I've switched it to the blue. <clears throat> and this could be useful if you want certain particles 
to f uh, to follow that or to be affected by that force and other particles to not. And finally, at the bottom, we have the, another way to set the position of the attractor. And this is just like clicking uh, here and dragging, but uh, with with by using these, we can map them to automation or to MIDI controller. All right, and I'll take us back to flow field now. Let me turn down the velocity for that. And flow field also has a similar tab below the strength called moves that also only allows you to select only one color or charge of particles to, to attract. So you can mix them. You can have the attractor attracting the blue, the flow field moving the orange yellow or the negative particles, and then you can get a complex modulation of your audio parameters by having different movements. And down here at the bottom is the resolution of the flow field, so you can make it bigger or smaller to have more or less possibilities in the directions. And um, more or less complex rotations. Sometimes they get stuck, so you have to draw them a clear path. <clears throat> And magnetism only has a strength. So you can combine all of the effects and um, get a really complex movement. Now let's uh, take a peek back in this lower menu while we have this magnetism on. So right now, their magnetism is on, and the particles are just pushing themselves in a corner. Well, that's not very useful. Um, so in the bottom menu, we can see, say what happens when we hit a corner or an edge. Right now, they're just being clipped, but we can also have them bounce off of it. Or even better for magnetism, maybe, is wrapping around. So that's what the edge uh, button does, or menu does. Now we'll see above that is we have the charge. This affects the probability that a particle being made will have a certain charge. Right now it's in the middle, so each particle when it's made has a 50-50 chance of being positive or negative. But we can change that probability. Now over here is the mass. Before we get into that, let's go back to the attractor so we can better see the effect of mass. Mass will affect the physics or the attraction of the system. So with bigger particles, we're going to have... Um, let me turn it up so we can see it. We're going to have... Um, um, almost like they're heavier objects. Um, they're, they're flying uh, further past the attraction point. Uh, they have much more force, it feels, than when the mass is small. But they also move slower, so much like you'd expect in the real world. Now, below mass, we have a, a kind of spread of the mass. So this will allow you to spread the mass, the probability that the particle will be a bigger or smaller mass. So now we have a bigger mixture um, of masses between the particles, and this will allow more complex dynamics of movement. And although I didn't want to focus on the audio parameters, it's good to note that here in the audio parameter ma mapping section, there is a parameter for mapping the mass to an audio parameter. So that means you can have, uh, 
let's say you mapped it to a filter or the pitch, that means you can have a static variety of pitch or filter values between the particles. And as you can see, the mass, unlike the position, isn't changing. So that could be a good way to get a static um, spread of, an, of a certain parameter um, since it's not moving or really modulating. So if you wanted them all to be a different pitch but not change the pitch, <clears throat> having a spread in the mass and mapping <clears throat> the, uh, the pitch parameter to mass is a good idea. And finally, we have here at the end the spawn area. And this just set, sets where particles will start from when they're created. So if I put it in this corner at the top left, you'll see when I create new particles, they're always starting there now. And I can move it down here just to demonstrate. And that could be nice if you want a certain kind of envelope or movement especially when you have this emitter on, but I won't get into the emitter in this video. And this doesn't have to do with movement, but since I'm here, you've been noticing when I click the screen, it creates a new set of randomized particles, and that's because I have the on-click setting set to random. But if I have it on freeze, when I click, it'll freeze the physics simulation, so we can freeze at that point and freeze those values um, that are being modulated. Great. So that about covers the movements. Um, to get different movements, such as like spiraling and things like that, it's just a matter of tweaking um, these different parameters together and sometimes getting a bit lucky. But once you have um, a movement that you like, Definitely remember to save that position. And then you can save a preset and you'll always retain that movement. By the way, um, these knobs here will help to kind of scale and speed up those dynamics that you uh, were able to get down with these parameters. And on the left and uh, on the left and bottom of the simulation, we have offsets. So we can offset the whole uh, dynamics to a certain region in case you wanted to just modulate in that region or this region. And remember, you can use all this knowledge and apply it to all three of the vector devices. And I hope this was useful for you. I'll try to make um, more videos um, demonstrating different aspects of these nature uh, devices. Thanks for watching.